how the Pentagon became the largest office building in the world for almost 80 years. Well, to understand this, you need to go back to the Second World War. And uh, at the time, even before the war, the US military, called the Department of War, at the time had a lot of space problem. And in the 1930s, they went to Congress to ask for money to have a new building to house, you know, office personnel, military personnel, logistics. And they got the money, and that was fine. They built, and uh, a few years later, Second World War started. And the Americans knew sooner or later they were going to get involved in the war. So they needed to prepare for that and the logistics of moving people around. And at the time, all the military people were in different buildings, munition building all over the place. But they wanted to centralize everything just to make it easier to work. And guess what? they discovered we needed another building. So they went to the co Congress <laughs> to ask for more money. And Congress said, no, you're not getting anything. A few years ago, you came here asking for money for building. We gave you the money and now you're back again. We are tired of you coming back for money all the time. Look, let's solve this space problem once and for all. Go back, do your homework, and come back with an overall solution that will solve the space problem. And guess what? They went back, did their homework, and came back and said, we're ready. We want more money. How much do you want? How about, say, $83 million? And Congress was like, oh, that is a lot of money. But anyway, when you think about it, $83 million to build a Pentagon is the equivalent of $1.19 billion in today's money. That was not some chicken change. It was a lot of money, but it was for the good of the whole country. And at the time, uh, the World War II was raging and, uh, you know, they needed to get prepared. So they got approval. And guess what? They, it was a case of either you go big or you go home. And the Pentagon just decided we're just going to go big. We're the world's largest office building. Uh, and that was 6.5 million square feet. Or, and uh, that is the floor space they had. There is 600,000 uh, square meters. It was just massive. And most of it was used for office space. And then you have other uh, space in between there used for other things. But you need to understand that the U.S. military is big. And uh, they had about 23,000 military and civilian employees in there and other uh, thousands of non-defense or support uh, personnel. It was massive. It was like a city in its own. It was just big. So you needed a big building. And then they started on the 11th of September 1941, and building work was going fine. And guess what? Three months later, Pearl Harbor was bombed, and America officially was in the war, and then there was a lot of pressure to hurry up and get this building uh, completed. And what they did was, uh, they, because they, they were in so, so much hurry that any section that's been built, it wasn't a case of let's build. Once everything is finished, everyone will move in. It was like you finish this section, we move people in, people in, and then you move to the next section. And it was just build, uh, occupy, build, and occupy. And that is what they did. And on January 15th, 1943, completed. And that was fine. But of course, when you complete something like this, being a federal building, you send a big president to go and inaugurate it. So President Roosevelt came into the building and he was being shown around. And all of a sudden he saw, oh, what is that sign over there? And it, it was written, white only toilets and white only restaurants. So because at the time there was segregation in the United States and even the military couldn't get its acts together, Roosevelt was like, no, we can't have this in this uh, area, remove all, all white only sign. And the governor of Virginia, the location where the Pentagon was, was like, no, we disagree. You know, this is the way we do things down here. And the president was like, excuse me, this is a federal building under federal jurisdiction. You're going to remove that. And because he was the president, they had to do what he said. Okay, so with that, 
the Pentagon became the only U.S. building that was not segregated from its inception until in the 60s when, you know, all the other federal buildings and all state buildings were integrated, sort of integrated. But anyway, that's a discussion for another time. So at the time, the strange thing was that racism was still on, but you still had white and black uh, personnel working together because a lot of these people also went to war and the war was uh, in Europe. So black soldiers, white soldiers also went to fight and defend American values there. But the Pentagon became uh, a big building and it was used and until it was bombed away, uh, during the September 11th uh, uh, attacks, but it was later reconstructed. But over the years, it has been uh, modernized to bring it to today's standards of uh, construction. So it has become a symbol of the US military. And as uh, news uh, reporters will say, the Pentagon has said this, and you know, okay, the military, Ministry of Defense, similar to what they said, oh, White House said this, you know, this is official uh, uh, information coming from the president's uh, press office. And that is what the Pentagon is. And an interesting thing about the Pentagon is that it held that position as the largest building, uh, office building in the world for almost 80 years until, of course, then the Indians came along and said, hold my curry. You cannot have that. And then entered the Surat Diamond Burst. That is now the largest office building in the world. And it is in Gujarat Surat in India. So anyway, that is a brief history of how the Pentagon became the largest office building until 2023.